All right, kids, story time. Gather around. Yay. And today we are going to continue our unit on our city's history by reading a story. Oh my gosh, look at it. All right, now, quiet down, please. Once upon a time, there was a city named Akostan, located in southern Chile, filled with trash, pollution, and unhappy people. A lot of the citizens were sick from polluted water and air. Fish stopped making their way through the trash-clogged river, and trees caught diseases and died until they disappeared. But then, a project called Grace heard of this miserable, polluted city and came to help. As we discussed yesterday, can anyone remember what Grace stands for? Grace, or G-R-A-C-E, stands for Groundbreaking, Redesigned, Advanced Circular Academies. Yes, good, Avery. Now, back to our story. Grace found the funding for Acostera and came to the rescue. Acostera was redesigned to revolve around a circular economy instead of a linear one. And since the name Acostera was correlated with many struggles and rough times, the city was renamed Aurora Valley to help resemble a fresh start. Now it's home to us and 2.7 million more educated citizens. There is no trash in our city thanks to the TCRN, which stands for... The Trash Collection and Recycling Network. Correct. Grace Environmental and Solid Waste Engineers created the TCRN along with a new substitution for plastic-based items and packaging made from keratin from chicken feathers and starch. Items are disposed of in one of the garbage cans on the street in your home, and they're color-coded so it's easier to sort them. The color of the item is scanned inside the garbage can, and then it's sent to its assigned recycling facility and a vacuum tube. Does anyone have an idea of what a trade-off of this system might be? It might take longer to sort the items? Yes, it does take longer, and that is the main trade-off. But the TCRN has much more efficient ways of processing items to avoid unused materials, so it's worth the time. Any other items can be biodegraded in composting facilities or remanufactured for other products. Does anyone know what helps to power the TCRN in the city? We have four types of energy. Solar, Fusion, Otec, and Hydroelectric Energy. Yes, do you remember anything about these energy sources? Well, I've seen lots of solar panels on cars and on top of buildings. I also know that the artificial river is made up of extra rainwater and filtered rainwater, which provides our hydroelectric energy supply. When the city is at its lowest use of energy, extra energy is used to pump water to the top of a mountain into a reservoir, where it is stored as potential energy. When our city needs extra energy, the reservoir water is released down a separate river that runs down a mountain, and then it connects back with the main river. On its way down the mountain, it spins hydroelectric turbines. The turbines and hydroelectric dams created challenges for natural wildlife, so that's why we have a separate artificial river. Right. Grace first built the dam on a natural river, but they struggled with flooding and biodiversity. So instead, they designed and made an artificial river that runs down one of the mountains, and after Acostera's struggling times, Aurora Valley has tried to incorporate more natural biodiversity, like building reserves for wildlife and reintroducing biodiversity into crops. Yes, this makes crops more resilient. Additionally, Aurora Valley is still more than 30% of green space, which is also the third principle of a circular economy. Wow, you all know so much about hydroelectric energy and biodiversity. In Acostera, the energy sources were very unreliable, but now because of our amazing energy sources like hydroelectric and fusion, we have very reliable power in our city. Both the TCRN and energy systems are part of the first circular economy principle. Is city zoning or microgrids ring a bell to anyone? Our city stepped off into microgrids and each included a residential and commercial zone. Yep. Microgrids also have first responder units, green space, energy storage, and a backup water supply. More main buildings, such as schools and hospitals, are evenly placed around the city. Today, we have another special surprise. Grace Engineers built this amazing model oh for, city gosh, for schools like ours cool. to use and learn about. The cars are mainly powered by solar charging strips and panels underneath roads that produce about 8.2 kilowatt hours of energy for 12 times 12 square foot road. Roads are made from recycled plastics and are painted white to reflect city heat, which lowers temperatures by five to 10 degrees. Now, moving on to the Hyperloop, I know Isabel knows about this. Yeah, it runs below the city in a vacuum sealed tube that magnetically levitates the pods inside. But one try about the Hyperloop is that it was very expensive to build, but lots of people use it, so that money is being put to good use. I use it every day with my family, and my mom says we are very lucky to have such a great transportation and education system. Yeah, that's very true. Unlike other cities, we only have four-day work and school weeks, plus free childcare. Smallest class sizes, special classrooms, and being able to advance grades at your intelligence level, not age, helps reduce the stress of falling behind in classes. Another service that Aurora Valley provides is the HIP, Healthcare for All program, that gives citizens the right to have free healthcare. I also heard you can achieve more benefits, such as lower taxes and housing costs, just as long as you stay under the local wage limitations. Yes. 
Now, we're going to discuss the question of the day, which is, what's your favorite activity to do in the city? I love to take lots of walks at night and look at the pretty southern lights, and there's a lot of really cool scenery. And I feel really safe at night because of the reliable police and drones patrolling the city. I like exploring the city and visiting Aurora Valley University. I want to go to college there. And then I also heard you can work for Grace Co. or for the city, then get free healthcare and other benefits. My favorite activity is going to the many rental clothing stores because Aurora Valley has reduced the amount of clothing waste from 2020 by 90%. After several lives of usage, clothing is then remanufactured for other products or composted since the materials are biodegradable, which also contributes to the second principle in a circular economy. Cool. Miss Smith, do you know what happens to old electronics? I sure do. First off, as you know, Aurora Valley uses holograms to help reduce electronic waste. After an electronics lifetime, copper and other materials are taken from it and used for other purposes. After hyperloop pods can't be used anymore, they're divided into parts and used for architecture throughout the city. And Aurora Valley uses carbon neutral chemical recycling to break materials into the base atomic form, which is then used for other materials throughout the city. Fantastic work today, kids. We've got a few minutes left before recess, so before we go, let's summarize what we've learned from this unit. Yesterday's topic was... Solar panel crops, aquaponics, and composting. Yep. Today we learned more about innovative features of our city, like the TCRN, energy systems, and how our city revolves around a circular economy. Tomorrow we're going to finish up our unit by talking about why our industrial facilities and power lines are underground, and then we'll get started making models of your favorite futuristic elements of our city. All right, looks like it's recess time. See you kids after lunch.